Okay, in this example, we have a 200 millivolt, 120 hertz ripple right in on top of a 18 volt, 18.3 volt DC level. The purpose, purpose of this exercise is to try to determine what can and can't be done with the pan and zoom capabilities of the version 3.52 software, firmware I should say. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do with this. Right now you can barely tell it's a sine wave because of the resolution of the nano. So the first thing I want to do is increase our range. The zero volt line, the ground position indicator, when you power it on now, it starts out at zero volts down here. Ground position is zero volts. And that only gives us half the display range. So what we're going to do is for this particular incident, for this particular situation, we want to go ahead and drop the ground line way on the bottom out of double how much voltage we can see with it without exceeding the capabilities of the internal analog digital converter. So we're going to step the ground level down to as low as it goes, right there's as low as it goes, 95 steps down. Now we have more dynamic range to measure positive voltages. The next step is to vertical position it down to the actual display itself. Notice it moved down a few steps. Now we're going to turn on this pop-up off and go up here and change the range scale down to 2 volts per division. You never know which way to go with this. So you notice we still have our signal up there. Now it does look like a sine wave. We can go back down here and take our vertical position and slide it down a few more steps, get it towards the center of the screen. So what we have now is the signal, the 200 millivolt signal right on top of 18 volts DC in the center of the screen using DC coupling because the nano has no AC coupling. Let's go down and do a measurement on this for a second. So slide down here, hit the measurement function, Notice the nano thinks it's 0.23 volts, peak to peak. And that's close, you know, I think I measured 200 volts peak to peak with the nano itself when I started with just the sine wave generator by itself. So the point of this whole exercise here is you can measure each voltage peak to peak and it does seem to be in the ballpark if we turn off the measurement functions. Let's take some cursors down and try to do a cursor measurement. I've made numerous cursor adjustments, voltage cursors, and my eyeballs say it's probably around 240 millivolts. So once again, that's the ability of the ADC to measure the steps of a voltage measurement. Therefore, it's probably off a little bit, just like the measurement function was off a little bit. So it's much easier, instead of using the cursors, just in case you don't see where the cursors are, I'll move the V2 cursor down, it's right there, and I'll move the V1 cursor up, which is right there, so that's where I had them. I'm going to turn off the cursors now, I don't like them when I don't need them, so I'm going to hold long M, turns off that cursor, come back down here, hold long M, turns off V2 cursor. Now the cursor lines are out of my way. So in summary, if we look at the measurement function, it does say the peak-to-peak -peak value, which is the sine wave portion of this signal. It also shows the V average, which is the DC portion of the signal. It shows the V man, V mix. V min, V max. Can't talk today. So we can see that there's a sine wave ripple on the 18 volts. We're not sure if it's 200 millivolts or 250 millivolts in amplitude, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. So now let's go ahead and we'll save this whole thing, this uh, capture buffer. We're going to save the capture buffer to the SD card and use Excel to analyze this wave a little bit further. We're doing all this because the versions 3.51 and 5.2 have in increased precision of measurements. 
Therefore, Excel can probably do a better job with when it's giving better precision. So let's go ahead and I'll hold the long M, save the capture buffer, now it's saving it, file number 20, XML. And next we'll go ahead and take a look at that with Excel. Okay, I've started Microsoft Excel. I'm going to click File, File Open. I'm going to go down to the DS Nano card buffer area. We're going to pull up File 20 XML. We're going to use XML Source Task Pane. Say OK here. I'm going to come up here and select Profile, which selects all the parameters about that file. Place it up here in the H column. I'm going to take the sequence number, drag it up here, and put it in the B column. Don't use the A column, we need that for something else. And we'll take the value and drop it in the C column. Now we're ready to go ahead and import the data. We we'll click Data, XML Data, Import the Data, go back to the same file source, and we import the data. If you look over here in this panel, you notice that the trigger in index number is 1614. So I don't care about what happens before the trigger. So I'm going to put, I'll leave 200 to the left of the trigger. So I'm going to get rid of the first 1400 sequence values. And the way you do that, come up here and you select column 2. And you hold and drag your mouse down, get rid of the first 1400. Take a few seconds. I'm going to delete the first 1400 blocks of columns of information. Rows, I should. First 1400 rows of information. We don't need it. So I went a little bit too far. So come down here and do 1401. So I let go of the left mouse button. Come up here, edit. And I can delete. And it deleted all those rows. So now, click somewhere else. So now the row 2 starts to sequence number 1400. But we don't want the chart to display 0 to 1400, so we got to offset this back to 0. So to do that, we click over here, write an equation, equals B2, column B2, which is 1400, minus 1400, we make column a2 equal to 0. Sure enough, it equals 0. Now we'll go ahead and we'll copy that formula. We'll click on A3, drag it down. We'll do 600. We'll do, that'd be two full nano screens. So we'll drag it down about 600. And we're approaching 600. Okay, it's close enough. 608. Let go of the left mouse button, right click, paste. Now we have new sequence numbers for those old sequence numbers. The data didn't change. Sequence 0 is still 18.27 volts when it used to be for sequence 1400 was 18.27 volts. But now we can use it. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and select column A by itself, then shift column I'm in control, column C. Now A will be our x-axis, C will be our y-axis. So come up here and we insert a chart. Scatter. Next. And I'll go next. Get rid of stupid legend. And finish. We now have a chart. You notice the chart stopped because the column A only went up down to 600. So we don't have to worry about the 4,000 over here in column B because the chart's only using column A. And with this particular waveform, I can stretch down a little bit. We slide this over. You can very easily see that there is a waveform on here. And you can see that it goes from about 0.25 to about 0.45 volts. 18.45 and that's about 200 millivolts. Runs a little bit under here, runs a little bit over here. 
So I imagine there's noise on top of this. 200 millivolts coming out of my function generator. It's not an expensive function generator, so it probably has some ripple noise on it. So anyway, you can see it. It is pretty close to 200 millivolts, peak to peak. And we can even measure the frequency if you want to. So let's do that next. Okay, to measure the frequency, we'll bring up our scientific calculator and we'll use that. So I want to measure the time interval of one cycle. So we can pick this point right here. I'll take focus away from there, it won't work. So we'll pick this point right here, it's 358. 379. So it's 358 minus 379. 60, 19. So I wrote a formula right here. 379 minus 358 is 21 increments. Now Ben F. told us that time range divided by sample count is the time for each sample increment, each sequence increment. So if we bring up our calculator we plug in 1.639, 1.639, divide that by 4098, equals that, times the 21 down here. So that should be the period of the signal, the reciprocal of that. Should be the frequency of the signal, it's about 119 hertz. And I put in 120 hertz. So you notice you can't easily measure the frequency of these sine waves. So what we've proven here is that the new BenF version 3.51 of 5.2 software changes, firmware changes, do actually give us very enhanced capture buffer data, just as he says. We can easily see this 0.2 volts right on top of 18 volts. So he did an excellent job. If you want to get a bigger view of this waveform, what we can do is we can right click here and change the source data. We can limit this down to 300. Let's go to 300. Over here we'll do 300. say OK. Now you know if we've, ex we've expanded it twice the horizontal expansion by only taking 300 samples. So you might find it easier to measure things on the X scale. 46, 67, still 21. But you might be able to view it easier. The advantage of having the larger view is that you can see a trend. You can see how the averages work. Shorter view gives you more detail. Notice these spikes weren't really showing up in the other view. But they're there. That's some kind of noise right on top of my signal generator. Or it's some kind of artifact created by the DSO Nano sample. So in closing, we've demonstrated how you can, in fact, measure 200 millivolts on top of an 18 volt DC level, which cover, should cover most electronic circuit applications in use today. Most of them are below 18 volts VCC.